And as you can see, we are joined once again on the programme by the Education Secretary, Gillian Keegan. Lovely to see you this morning, morning Minister. Um, look, I want to start not on your brief, if at all possible. Just before the weather there, we were examining the events that took place at, at the Grand National. And of course, I understand you have Goodwood in your constituency over the flats. I just wonder if you have a view on what we are seeing at horse racing events like that. We've heard from the RSPCA uh, in the past 24 hours uh, saying that horse racing should conduct an urgent review so that we never again exit a festival of racing with three dead horses. What's your view on the matter? Well, to be honest, I'm, I, I'm not all over the top of it, no. but I am from Liverpool as well, so the Grand mm. National, I know, is extremely uh, precious and obviously everybody puts their... And it's, it, it, you know, it often has... Um, attract attention, etc. Um, but I'm sure that the bodies will, will work together. You know, the thing, the great thing about this country is, you know, when things happen, when, when tragic things happen, and particularly to animals and horses, you know, all the people, the relevant people do look to see what can be done and, and, and what changes need to be made. And that's happened a couple of times, actually, after the Grand National. Mm. Uh, well, we are speaking to the Jockey Club a little later in the programme, so we'll pick that up with them. Um, but, but let's talk strikes, and, and we will start on, on the NHS. Certainly looks likely that we are going to see a, a period of industrial unrest from nurses potentially going all the way to, to, to Christmas. Are the government entirely sanguine with the fact that, you know, the offer on the table is the final offer and that there will be no more negotiations? Well, that offer has been accepted, actually, by all of the unions, the Agenda for Change unions, uh, which is actually different from the teachers' unions, mm -hmm. but the Agenda for Change unions all accepted that offer. Um, it is worth, uh, I think, around about £5,000 uh, over the period that they were negotiating it for to the average nurse. Um, um, and, of course, it's been put to, I think, two of the unions now. One of them's accepted it, one of them very narrowly rejected it, despite um, their general secretary actually recommending it. I think what happens now is there's two unions that are balloting. Those two unions, obviously, we need to wait for the ballot. There is a, a, a meeting, uh, um, an agenda for change, uh, NHS uh, council meeting, staff council meeting, which I think is the 2nd of May. And from that, we'll then get... Um, you know, the results formally from all of the ballots. But we are approaching a point, if we haven't reached it already, aren't we, where patient safety is going to become an issue. I, I, I again just ask the question, is it not worth at least maintaining that dialogue with the nurses' unions in any kind of attempt to, to stop that potential harm taking place? Well, of course, we always keep dialogues open um, and we will also be going forward um, in the case of teaching with the independent pay review mm. uh, process now. But th the reality is what we're trying to do is get a fair and reasonable balance between the taxpayers. We're also trying to make sure we halve inflation, don't make it worse. We know inflation has been the cause of this. We know it's been a spike. It's Everybody's uh, suffered from it, uh, not even just in our country. And we know that what the government needs to do is to get inflation down so, so that we don't have this problem for everybody and we can't, um, you know... And we've also obviously put energy relief uh, schemes in place because we know how, how tough this has been sure. for people. That's why we put those in place. But what you can't have, and patient safety, but also the backlog... I mean, you know, I was talking to people yesterday, one who just luckily had an operation, one who's had theirs cancelled uh, on a visit I did in my constituency. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough for people. Already they've had a delay through mm. the pandemic in many cases, a lot of people in pain. And we rely on our NHS and we rely on our staff being there. And we rely on our education system. Yes. Uh, again, let's talk about the teachers. I mean, they quite clearly are not happy with what's on the table, in part because of the way it's funded, offering them 4.5%, but most of that money has to come out of existing budgets, doesn't it? Well, what happened... So I got the, this role on the 25th mm -hmm. of October and the independent pay review body had already recommended a 5.4% mm -hmm. increase, which was higher than the 3% mm -hmm. that uh, the department had budgeted for and actually the schools had budgeted for as well. So there was 3% in the budget. So the first thing I had to do, there was a letter saying we need £2 billion more to pay for this increase plus the other inflationary pressures. So that money we got in the autumn statement yep. and that was to take it up to 5.4%. Mm -hmm. And then what we've done is we've looked at that and said, if we offer, well, if this had been accepted, the extra £1,000 and the 4.5%, looking at those school budgets, we would have to put an extra £620 million sure, sure, to but, that. Yeah, I get that. So I get we that. Have, we've calculated it. The IFS have also looked at it and said, yes, yeah. there is enough money going into school budgets to cover those costs. Yeah. I, am, um, I understand but it the is an important Sumer, point. Today be lecturing us all on the fact that maths isn't important. But even I understand that if you offer a 4.5% pay rise, 
enterprise, but only funds 0.5% of that. That's an awful lot of money that has to come from Because elsewhere within the budget, budgets. there was an assumption, so this is very mm -hmm. good for the maths, you're right, maths to 18, because sometimes you make assumptions mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to look. So an assumption was made that there would be a 3.5% mm -hmm. rise affordability within that. Mm -hmm. And there was assumptions made about energy costs. Yep. The energy costs have come down since that point. Mm -hmm. So if it's recalculated now, we calculate and the IFS agree sure. that the assumption is that 4% that is included in that extra money already and half a percent is extra. Now, by the way, Neil, I, I, if we I, I were just, talk, if we were that, just talking about if half not, a if percent... You're not, if, you're not, if, you're not talking, if you're not going to pay the 4.5% yourself, well, it does come from elsewhere in the we, budget. We, we, are pay, we are paying ourselves you because that $2 billion is us paying extra money. What, what, so, what, what, but I think this is really important because this is the key thing for teachers. Mm -hmm. I think 89% of the teachers said they'd reject the deal, and that uh -huh. went down to 31% in a survey if they thought it was funded. So what, we, what we're doing now is making sure that we get sure. more independent verification of our position and the IFS that just, it is fully funded. Just, just on the, the, the speech that the, the Prime Minister is making later today about the anti-maths mindset, look, I, I understand that for a number of people in this government, math is a big priority. Take what, what Liz Truss, you know, the former Prime Minister herself said. She said, you know, it is no exaggeration to say this is a make or break period in the history of maths in this country. We are now playing catch up. The support has not been there for maths teachers in this country, nor the iron will and determination to encourage more young people to take the subject after GCSEs. I mean, the problem with that statement is, as you see on the screen there, Liz Truss said that when she was Education Minister back in 2012. If there, is problem, if there are problems with maths provision in this country, surely it is the fault of the government that has been in, and you know, it's more than the fingers on two of my hands, but I think roughly 13 years. So 2012 was when she said that, and she was correct in 2012. Mm -hmm. We completely revolutionised how we teach maths in this country mm -hmm. in 2015. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we did a lot of um, research and we worked with lots of people um, to look at um, you know, how the best maths teaching in the world and who was best at maths in the world. Mm -hmm. And we basically took the Singaporean method and we adapted it here in I'm the UK. I'm just saying, if Liz Truss and was we saying that in 2012, and, and we Liz introduced into today saying we have an anti-maths mindset, yeah. but there's only one group of well, people we can blame so, for that. So, so if you want to listen to what we've done, because I think it's really important, so we've introduced mastery mm -hmm. into all of our primary schools and now into secondary mm -hmm. schools, and we have 40 expert maths hubs helping mm -hmm. people be able to we, teach we that. We couldn't recruit maths we teachers also in 2012. Have, we can't recruit maths we, teachers we in 2023. We also have what's called uh, MPQs to enable uh, existing teachers at primary primary level to get more comfortable teaching maths. So that's been uh, very important as well. We've also put bursaries in place to get more maths teachers. That's quite recent. Mm. Um, and if you look at the, the results of the younger children, they are doing really well now in maths. And what we've done is got a completely new way of teaching maths, different from when you and I taught it. And what we're saying is, if we take that all the way through, we've also reformed GCSEs and A-levels. A-levels since then, since then, since Liz Truss said that, is now the number one A-level choice is maths. So there's been huge amount of progress, but now we want to go further and we are an outlier. We're the only country in the OECD pretty much that doesn't uh, do maths to 18. And maths is such an important part in a digital world that our young people, this next generation, are going to be competing in and looking for jobs soon. Uh, Minister, you'll be entirely pleased to hear that we are out of time, so I won't be able to run through the list of maths questions that I, of course, had scribbled well, the, on the back. Well, the, the one thing I could work <laughs> out was that the probability of you asking me a maths question was 100%. There we go. Thought that was the case. <laughs> Minister, good to have you on the programme this morning.